Hi everybody, Susan Fleischman back here in our continuing series highlighting some of the fantastic nonprofits in Alexandria that are participating in this year's Spring to Action for Act for Alexandria. Today I have the pleasure of speaking with Amanda Hazelwood, who's the Executive Director of the Spitfire Club. Amanda, welcome. Thank you. Hi. It's great to have you here. Um, why don't you tell us a little bit about the Spitfire Club? Yeah, well, the Spitfire Club is a girls empowerment program that's built around empowering books about girls. So we feature diverse female protagonists and we pair these books with really fun activities, games, um, bonding sessions, abilities for kids to really interact with the content and also with each other. And particularly during the pandemic, we are finding that our girls need more connection, more opportunities for connection than even than they ever have. And so um, we meet weekly on Zoom and we read books and we play, we do science experiments, um, all sorts of really fun stuff. Wow, these pictures are great. Um... And obviously those were pre-pandemic because everybody was still right. in the classroom. Exactly. And um, so speaking of post-pandemic, how did, um, I mean, what, can you speak to the, some of the specific challenges that your organization faced in 2020? Absolutely, yeah. So in, before 2020, at the end of 2019, we finished a strategic planning process where we said, we set this bold goal. We want a thousand girls in the DC metro region to read more, read better, and be empowered. And then the world shut down. And they said, okay, are we, gonna, are we going to stick to our goal or are we going to pause? And we decided we're gonna keep going. And so we pivoted our entire program to occur online. Um, all of our girls participate once a week on Zoom. We have to package up all of the materials ahead of time and distribute it to their door because we don't want access to materials to be a barrier for our girls. Um, to participate. And um, we found that it's really worked well. We're, we're surprised by how successful we've been, but it has been a serious challenge to pivot, um, both logistically, but also financially, because the cost of equipping kids with all of the materials they need um, is significant. Yeah. We're also finding that kids don't have access to reading material in the same way that they used to. They're not in their school library or at their teacher's um, you know, bookshelf every day. Mm -hmm. And kids don't read as much when they don't have access to fresh reading material. And so we found that one of our major goals is making sure that, kids all are, that our kids always have access to new good reading material so that they're still reading instead of watching TV or playing video games or whatever, whatever mm -hmm. else they would do with their free time. Right. Um, yeah. Excellent. Um, how did um, how did Spring to Action um, last year and previous years, how did that help you address, well, certainly from last year, how did it help you address, you know, some of these challenges that you faced? I mean, what impact did those donations have for you? Absolutely. I mean, Spring to Action was far more crit critical than I even realized it would be last year. Um, I was very concerned that maybe we wouldn't do well. We're not a frontline organization. People don't eat meals or receive healthcare services because of our existence. Um, and so I thought that maybe we wouldn't have as successful of a campaign, but we ended up funding a third, we're a startup, we're very small. We ended up funding a third of our budget for 2020 through Spring to Action. Um, That's fantastic. Yeah, and so it's something you don't have to worry about while you're yes, your Yes, exactly. Uh huh. Yeah, and and the 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 benefits are so wide ranging and far reaching. Um, uh, you mentioned before some of your goals. Um, can you speak more specifically to that? Do you guys have, um, you know, as we're kind of coming out of of, of mm -hmm. quarantining and we're beginning mm -hmm. to to open up again? I mean, schools are opening up again. I mean, what are your uh, goals moving forward for 2021. I mean, you have the end of this end of this school year, but then mm -hmm. you have the summer and then the fall school year. So do you guys have mm -hmm. specific goals in mind? Yes. So we're going to continue to grow and serve. We've served over 100 unique kids during the pandemic. We want to continue increasing those numbers. Um, but I think anyone who works in education will tell you right now that the most important thing is equitable COVID recovery. So we're developing a tutoring program where participants in our regular Spitfire programming can self-select to have small group reading support as well with a trained tutor or teacher or educator 
who can help guide them in their reading and help them increase, um, you know, increase their their reading levels so that they can um, mm -hmm. not fall behind. Right, right. And reading is such a fundamental skill. And, and, you know, if you can really foster that love of reading, it's just going to help you in mm -hmm. everything and anything, not only academically, but in your life, really. So absolutely. Um, what a wonderful organization you have. What what do you want the community to know? I mean, how can they support you um, in reaching some of those goals and just in, re in, in, in achieving your overall charter? Uh, you know, how, yeah. can, how can they, do, uh, I mean, donations, I would imagine. Donations uh, uh -huh. are clearly, but, but uh -huh. there are so many ways that we could benefit from support. We need, we need access to books. Um, we work with a lot of different partners, um, like Inspire Lit is probably participating in Spring to Action, and um, we, we all collaborate on book access. Um, we need partners to refer their kids to our program, particularly right now. It's very hard to access kids um, and to find kids to participate. Parents have so many things to do um, than find fun extracurricular activities for their children. And so partnership um, would be incredibly helpful. Um, and, and we can also use volunteers. Uh, Volunteer Alexandria is a wonderful, has been a wonderful resource for us. We've found so many wonderful people who help us with things like website development. I, I have a Volunteer Alexandria um, volunteer helping me with this Spring to Action campaign. Oh, good. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the Volunteer Alexandria, forget it, they're amazing. You know, they're so they're, amazing. Uh, they are. They really are. They got it together. Yeah. We, well, we live in such a wonderful community where we're all we just do. working together, you know? I know. I mean, in this Spring to Action and Act for Alexandria is a, is a primary example of it. I mean, the yes. work they do is to highlight the work that you do is um, one of those things nobody realized how desperately it was needed until they came yes. along and said, hey, we can do this. And so... Um, just really, I'm, we're, we at the Zebra are honored to be a, to be a part of it and and to you know do our do what we can to help everybody get the word out. So, um, Amanda, what a pleasure talking to you today and learning about the Spitfire Club. I just I really love it. Um, Thanks. Um, one final question. Uh, it's kind of more like a fill in the blank. I want you to repeat mm -hmm. after me and fill in the blank. And it's I spring to action because I spring to action because our girls deserve to love to read. Absolutely. Well, I, I, I hope that you reach some of your goals for 2021. And I hope that you guys have a really great day on Spring to Action April 28th. Thanks. Thank you so, Thanks much, so much, Amanda. Okay, take care.